Welcome home. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. Baltimore positive. The uh, Orioles are coming home, and we're coming home to fade these this week. It feels like we took time off from the, the Crab Cake Tour, but not really. Like a week off, 4th of July. Birds go west. They come back east. It'll be the Cubs and the Yankees all week. On Friday, we will be at Fadley's in the new Lexington market. If you haven't been, it's a great opportunity to come down, yell at some Yankees fans. I'm sure there'll be plenty around. All of it brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Our friends uh, giving us the Gold Rush Sevens doublers. We'll have these on Friday afternoon from 2 until 5 at Fadley's. Got some good guests coming down. Leonard Raskin's going to stop by. Yankees in town. Luke Jones will be with us. Our friends at Liberty Pure Solutions keeping our water crystal clear as well as Jiffy Lube Multicare putting us out on the road as always and uh we don't really get to the second half of baseball until next week and then we got the all-star game and luke's going on vacation uh but we have a week of baseball here sort of bonus baseball and uh, orioles go out to the west coast and handle their business as best as you want them to do in the middle of the night saturday notwithstanding which is a little embarrassing but um a wake-up call for young Cade povich luke how are you man happy week to you i know uh website's been a little wonky as jessica gets us uh out into the uh, blue water of uh of football season we're a couple weeks out on that in vacation but a week of late night baseball in seattle and whatever that mess was in oakland over the weekend oh. Still won two out of three. I mean, if you want to be embarrassed about Saturday, you can. Yeah, Saturday stunk. But I meant the mess of nobody being at the stadium. Oh, and yeah. Well, and that's. Dump and, yeah, I mean. And that, I, I, I was a little amused hearing some of the Orioles broadcasters wax poetics about, you know, wax nostalgia about the Coliseum. And uh, I mean, this is. I think anyone who's paid attention to it has thought this would be the ultimate conclusion for the last 15 years, if not longer than that, quite frankly. Uh, but the Orioles, they take take care of business. Uh, I think back to where we were, what, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, and five in a row, and all the panic, and what's going on with the pitching, and, and yeah, I mean, some of that's still there, and we're, we're going to talk about trades and the potential for that in another segment, but... Well, if the pitching were better, they'd win every night, right? They just would win nine out of ten, right? I mean, at some point in time, you have to look at this and say, <laughs> okay, Cleveland's been a smidge ahead of them of late for best record in the American League, but how about the fact that where the Orioles are where they've been for the most part. And yes, five game losing streak, notwithstanding, take a look at where they've been and what's happened to the New York Yankees over the last three weeks. And I think it puts things in perspective and saying, the Orioles are all right. They're still well, it's hard right, to but... win seven, play 700 baseball. It's like for at any point, it's hard to do that. Even if you're the Yankees and you're on fire, because it felt like, I don't know, early June, it felt like they never lost. It felt like they won for a month, right? Every night. Yeah, I mean, it looked like that for a while there, it felt like the Yankees were never going to lose again, and they've been terrible for three weeks. I mean, they've lost, what, 15 of 20? That's the exact kind of stretch I was saying that the Orioles' five-game losing streak couldn't turn into. You know, you lose five in a row, I mean, that's going to happen to just about every team in baseball over the course of 162. The key is not letting that turn into three or four weeks of struggles, and we've seen the Orioles win eight of 11 since then, and, and yeah. Saturday in Oakland was rough and there's still questions about the pitching. Although Dean Kramer came back and pitched really well in his return from the IL. Seems like Albert Suarez has stabilized himself a little bit over his last couple outings. So yeah, they still, they still need pitching. Although I'll, I'll still contest. I, I still think bullpen uh, is a bigger priority than another starter. Uh, if you want me to be honest, but in the meantime, they're still winning a lot of games and they went to Seattle and, took care of the Mariners who are in first place, despite the fact that they've come crashing back to earth a little bit. And the Astros have kind of been the talk of the AL West and, you know, the Orioles, uh, as you pointed out, the mess in terms of just the lack of people at the, at the Coliseum. And uh, I saw you make reference early in, before Sunday's game started that the Orioles needed to bring their own energy. Well, they hang a four spot on the board in the very first inning and, you know, feeling good about themselves. And that's kind of the best way that you want to move on from a blowout loss the day before is to start fast. Get an yeah, What do you want to say about Saturday? Let's at least plant that in because we all remember 30 to three with the Rangers. Yeah. James McCann is pitching on Saturday. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I had a little picnic here and I, I settled in to watch the game and I was over before it started. I'm like, well, we'll do something else on, on Saturday night at this point. Um, Unusual, rare, weird, but 
I mean, as I've pointed out with this team, where they lose five in a row, three in a row, St. Louis weekend, we go through their bad stretches. They've had two. It's the all-star break. They've had two bad stretches in their first place. Uh, so there's only so much you could complain about. But, you know, um, you know, a learning experience to get to get snuffed like that. I mean, they, they most of the guys on that team will never be beaten like that again in any game anywhere, especially in the middle of no one for nobody. On <laughs> it was It was just Saturday. It was a real outlier weird game. Yeah, I mean, it was completely weird. Uh, I mean, to your point, I, I think a lot of people were at Fourth of July cookouts. I was over at my sister's house with my extended family and saw the first couple winnings. And then, honestly, we turned it off and then turned it back on almost like a you couldn't turn away kind of thing. How uh, many are they going to score? Can they get to 30? Yeah, I mean, the the only relevant point from that beyond just the fact that it was a loss was Kate Povich struggling as dramatically as he did. I, I mean, his couple starts before that hadn't been necessarily great but weren't necessarily so bad where you're talking about sending him down or you're talking about whether he's going to make his next start anything like that so you know we're going to see how he responds here and uh, I I would think it's not going to be a long leash if he has another start anything close to resembling that he's going to get sent down uh, I think that's evident well, Cole but... Irvin would have been better than that yeah, but but at the same time, I mean, we've seen Cole Urban struggle. I mean, the, right now, I mean, that fifth spot in the rotation is very much a question for the next few months. Obviously, with the trade deadline, it's a case of can you upgrade the number three spot in your rotation? But, you know, they bounced right back. Grayson Rodriguez did what he's done for a while now, and we've talked about it. He came, went out there and, and pitched really well. And, you know, the final Final line didn't look quite as good because he did give up, uh, you know, what the inherited run scored in the seventh inning. But, I mean, he's just been really, really good. You know, I've seen some people talk about, you know, could he have been an all-star? No. Uh, I, I think if you look, other than wins, you know, and, and you know what I'm going to say about pitcher wins at this point in time. But at the same time, he's been an 11-game winner, and he's pitched really well, and he's – Corbin Burns has been the ace, but Grayson Rodriguez has been that stopper for them on a couple occasions this year. Uh, and we saw that uh, during the Cleveland series, even uh, as they had lost five in a row. So, you know, it was a good response on Sunday, Saturday, to your point. It's an outlier. Of course it is. <laughs> as I said, it was a tough day for the run differential, yet the Orioles still have the best run differential in the American League. So it shows you how much right they've done this year. But I think for where they were two weeks ago, coming off of the Houston series, losing the first two in the Cleveland series, all the angst about the pitching. And look, that angst and that those questions and that concern was there even when they were beating the Phillies and the Yankees the, the week or two prior to that. So that's been an ongoing thing. At the same time, statistically in the aggregate, their pitching has still been okay. You know, it's not as though it's been – this major problem because they're still winning games and on this road trip they won some close games where they didn't necessarily score a ton of runs but they pitched well enough to win in some of those games and you know even the bullpen holding up and Craig I was Kimball gonna say pitching well done. late is really yeah. the concern you know you get to the sixth inning you got a one run lead or you're down a run you're in a game you certainly have the bats to come back right at any point you just can't let the thing slide you, you, you don't want to have a Baker come in and turn a one run deficit into a three run deficit in the seventh inning and then all of a sudden you're going to lose that baseball game yeah but, but at the same time i mean they gave up three runs on sunday they gave up two runs on friday night uh, i mean it's not as though they've been getting bad pitching performances for the most part you know saturday aside i mean saturday be the extreme exception to it so uh, i mean it's it's kind of a boring discussion in the sense of this team just they write themselves right uh, like, like i said in new york right now in the bronx right now I mean, the Yankees are on fire in terms of all these problems. I mean, the the, the rest of their lineup, other than Judge and Soto, can't hit. Uh, you know, they even moved Volpe down in the line in the order, and he's one of their had been one of their more consistent performers. Their pitching has really gone sideways. And well, good. Let's think, see him on Friday and take advantage of that. Sure, but but my point <laughs> is, but, but but again, my point with when they lost five in a row was. This team has a two plus year history now of when they do have a stretch like that. And those stretches have been few and far between. They bounce back really quickly. I mean, it was a year ago at this time where they lost, what, six or seven and they were going to the Bronx and, you know, things were looking hairy and, and Tampa Bay was in first place. And and then the Orioles, you know, they they 
had a long winning streak right after that. So it hasn't been well, a long Well, they were first place team right last year, and they're a first place team right now. And the Yankees yeah. are coming in here on the struggle, and it might be a good time to get after them. I mean, I, I can envision a week from now, we're talking about this team going to Arlington. And look, we will have plenty of time to talk trade deadline. We're going to talk about the All-Stars and the snubbing and everybody getting their feelings hurt from Mountcastle and Westberg, you know, Rodriguez, you know, Kimbrell, all, all of them. We could talk about all of that. But the, the most important thing is they got games this weekend with the Yankees and they can really spike the ball at a point here. I mean, Cubs aren't very good. Um, I, you know, I, I look at this this week and say, this is a homecoming spike the ball, go to the all-star break. This is a weekend you'd remember if special things were to happen against the Yankees this weekend to really create some breathing room that, quite frankly, two weeks ago we didn't think was going to exist. Yeah, and, and I mean, obviously it's not over. And even if they sweep the Yankees, the division race isn't over. But in terms of the head-to-head, -head, you can really put your distance uh, between yourselves and the Yankees and the, in the scenario. Well, the last time they got together with the Yankees a couple of weeks ago, they sort of won the end of the war there. And uh, I'm going to stare at you and you're going to stare at me and I'm going to hit you and you're going to hit like all that's going to bubble back up before we're going to talk about that all week here. Right. Uh, I mean, we can, but the Orioles beat them. Uh, I mean, you know me, I'm and you can beat him again. But like that, that whole thing, like I, I, I have so little interest in like, not so much that we talk about it, because obviously if it happens, it happens and, and it's a relevant talking point. But in terms of who's at fault for what and who's hitting whom and all that, yeah, like that whole thing, the Orioles handled their business. They beat them. You know, I mean, the Yankees were belly aching like crazy about it and the Orioles beat them. So, yeah, I mean, you, you look at what happens this week. It's a matter of coming in and going into this three game weekend set. I mean, the Orioles have a what, five to two in, in head to head uh, against the Yankees so far. And if you can take two out of three from them, it, at the very least, then, I mean, you're really sitting pretty then uh, as it pertains to the head to head. I mean, you, you kind of have it sewed up uh, as it speaks, not the division. And Burns won't go like, against them. Burns is going earlier in the week. So yeah, I mean, from I'm, a pitching was... matchup, it is what it is, you know. Right. And, and but like it's like I said, I mean, the Yankees, I mean, everything that I talked about with them back in March, April, and even in the May, when we were talking about that late April, early May uh, that, that series where you were saying it was big and I was saying, well, there are no big series in April and May. And we, we all knew what it meant at, the, at that point in time. But the, the, the caveat I kept offering there uh, at that moment in time was this is a Yankees team that's very reliant on Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. And, and they're two of the best players on the planet. You know, there's no disputing that. But the rest of that lineup, older players. Injury prone guys like Stanton and Anthony Rizzo having some of the health concerns he's had in recent years and seeing what happened to them last year with all the injuries, uh, you know, obviously the starting pitching you, you liked, but there was still the question about Cole. I think there's still questions about Garrett Cole based on what we've seen performance wise from him uh, relative to being Cy Young award winner last year. Their bullpen has certainly come back down to earth. And you mentioned Craig Kimbrell, a lot of, a lot of Orioles fans unhappy that Clay Holmes got the nod. Uh, as far as a closer making the all-star team compared to Craig Kimbrell. A month ago, there was no debate. It was Holmes. But since then, it's been Craig Kimbrell who's been lights out, and Holmes has really had his issues. And so, that's why the Orioles are in first place. And it's why the Yankees have, what, lost 15 of 20 going into this week. So, I mean, it really, you know, it, it really is the tale of so many of the concerns that we've had about the Orioles. And look, this is all relative because we know the Orioles are a really good team. But so many of those concerns haven't really shown up for an extended period of time other than the five-game losing streak. But then they got themselves righted, and they've just you know, they've won eight of 11 since then. Whereas the Yankees, I can think back, because I was even watching it on uh, my MLB uh, TV package, where the Yankees lost that game in Kansas City, where I think they could have had a sweep. The Royals came back and beat them. Uh, it was like a Thursday afternoon game. And the Yankees have been... A, kind of a disaster since then. I think they've lost, what, of their last seven series, I think they've lost six of them, uh, and the other one was a split, so it just speaks to... Well, and the Orioles may have place. contributed to that, right? Yeah. Put, sort of put, put them on the road to not be... And here they come again, and I guess th this is where when you're the big brother, not the little brother, and, you know, the Orioles have been punching up for since your birth, <laughs> you know, for 40 years, they've been punching up at the Yankees. This is... 
um, ra- not just rarefied air, but a chance to give them a lights out a little bit and push them away this weekend while things are going well, while you got home cooking, while you're headed to the All Star break, while everybody's pissed about not making the All Star game, like all feeding into all of that. I, this is as ex- exciting uh, a homestand as they've had ever in a long. I mean, they get bigger and bigger and bigger because they haven't won anything in forty years. This should be a, an, a monumental kind of weekend for the Orioles, I think, as far as middle of the season homestands with first place on the line against the Yankees in the middle of summer. And then the all-star break after that, where Henderson's going to be on TV all night on Monday night, Tuesday night, if you hit home runs and you win, you get to be the stars. But either way, I'll tell you one thing that, that you know, as I look at it, they could be the best team in baseball at the all-star break a week from now, based on what happens to the Phillies and whatever. Not that you get a, a, a flag for that. But going into the All-Star break, this time last year, they were upstart, chasing Tampa, some nice young players, but unproven of anything. Still haven't proven anything in October, but these are the measurement points for franchises. And look, I know not everybody's watching the All-Star game next week, and the world doesn't stop anymore for it or whatever. But if you are stopping for it and you are watching it over that 36-hour period next week, the Orioles would be the toast of baseball and already are one of the toasts of baseball. If they lose three this weekend to the Yankees, that'll make things more interesting and louder if the Yankees do that. But the Orioles, this is a week for them to make a lot of noise, I think. Not just new ownership, franchise, home games, Yankees, all of that. This is where they establish that they're not just a team or a team that did something last year. I think this is a week they can really make some noise and, and put some distance between them and the Yankees. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's what the outside perception is going to be. I, I think inside that clubhouse, I, I think they're viewing it as another week. I mean, I, I think that's why they're so good is they don't when, when we were talking about that Philly series a few weeks back and how big that was and best team in the AL against best team in the NL or, you know, at least it was kind of setting up to be that way. You know, the Orioles at that point in time, they kind of shrugged and they said, look, it's no disrespect to anyone we're playing but one we're confident in ourselves and two it's a long season and i I think the the only difference and it's funny because you you even i'll go back to something you said like 90 seconds ago where you said the the yankees and the orioles and you kind of viewed it through the lens of big brother against little brother i would beg to, to say outside yes media wise yes fan bases yes all of that but as far as the two teams i'm not sure that's really the perception first of all the Yankees haven't won anything in a really long time. Oh, the, this it. group of Orioles has never been beaten by the Yankees. Right. It's, it's and, been the and, other way around. Sure. And that's my thing where, where you kind of, I, I think the teams themselves and putting aside payroll and, and all those other things that we talk about inevitably, when you're talking about these two markets, these two teams, the, and the right of field hall teams. of fame guard yeah. and going to Yankee, like, Oh yeah. All that's course. gone this weekend. They're coming here. They're but wearing gray. But that whole thing is, I, I think the Yankees internally are kind of like, gosh, we really need to beat those guys. And, and I think the Orioles, internally inside their clubhouse they just say hey it's the last week before the all-star break we're ready for a break you know it's been a long road june was so long but hey we're playing well we're fine the five game losing streak was a a bump in the road and we got ourselves righted immediately thereafter and let's go put a little more distance between ourselves and the yankees and again a sweep any any outcome this weekend's not deciding anything but it can certainly be a, a, a situation where you can go into the all-star break and potentially be five games up you know where, where that's you know you're feeling good that's not far from over but we know that but you can really be in a position where you think about how bad things felt two weeks ago and go back three or four weeks ago where the Yankees were just winning every single night and the Orioles were winning by the way the Orioles were winning every single night just about two and it was just you know there was a sense of frustration that man you're playing well and you're gaining no ground on them and uh, and but the last two weeks, I mean, the, the Orioles have gotten themselves straightened out and the Yankees have just been a mess. Uh, I mean, you know, while the Orioles were losing in Oakland, the, the Yankees had a big day against the Red Sox, but they lost the series Sunday night. So it, it just speaks to where they've been and, and their concerns. And they're coming into Baltimore, to your point. I'm sure there will be Yankees fans in town. Uh, I mean, there's all there always are. But at the same time. I think the urgency level for the Yankees is going to be extremely high. Whereas I think for the Orioles, the urgency is always high in the sense that this team's just good and they're on pace to win a hundred plus games for the second straight year. But 
they're in a position where I think this is more a great opportunity for the Orioles to put some more space between themselves and the Yankees. And uh, again, talking in terms of the head to head, you can really all but sew it up. you right. Uh, I mean, you know, if you sweep them, for example, then it would be, you know, you, you would have that head to head already uh, assured. So, you know, this is just, I, I don't know how to say it in any, any simpler terms, but this is a hell of a baseball team. And they've proven it over and over and over. And to your point, last year at this time, they had a very, you know, they they had a great record. Uh, They were right on the heels of the Rays at this time a year ago uh, and all of that. But there was still a sense of, okay, upstart team. Are they going to do it for a full 162? Who's real? Obviously, Rutschman's great. You know, Gunnar Henderson was on his way to winning rookie of the year at that point in time. But there were still questions as far as just how real, how authentic, how legitimate, how much of a serious contender they were this year. I mean, yes, once we get to October, yeah, the Orioles will have to prove it just like any team has to prove it, you know, and including teams that have done it in the past. Because, you know, just because you've done it one year doesn't mean you're going to do it the next. But there's nothing about this team right now that anyone should be diminishing in terms of where they are in the standings in terms of regular season success in terms of questioning whether they're going to continue this. Yeah. I want to see them add bullpen. Yeah. I want to see them add another starter. There's no doubt about that, but they've they're 24 games over 500 going into the last week before the all-star break, even with some of their question marks, even with some of the guys that they've lost. And uh, as I'll continue to point out, it's not like Kyle Bradish, John Means, and Tyler Wells were in the rotation the entire first half. I mean, those guys combined for 15 starts. So they've won a lot of games even without those guys being on the field. So it's not as though you're looking at this and questioning, are they going to continue? You know, are they going to continue to win games? Yeah, they're going to continue to win games. But now it's a matter of maintaining where you are in terms of winning the division. You know, they're right, right there with Cleveland. I, Cleveland going into you know, the week is percentage points ahead for the best team uh, in the AL, but they're right there. And now it's just a matter of continuing that while obviously over these next three weeks, seeing what the Orioles are going to do to fortify this roster, not so much just for the rest of the regular season, but more importantly, October and how that's going to look. And we'll, and we'll get into that. And obviously there's still more conjecture than substance, you know, more sizzle than steak uh, at this point, three weeks out, but uh, with the expectations being that they're going to add, um, they're really, really good, even even before they add at the trade deadline. So that's where this is just so exciting. Again, there was it's why when they had lost five in a row, look, I, I wasn't sitting here saying that everything's peachy and everything's totally fine. At the same time, you didn't hear me say the sky was falling. And the reason why is this team has a two week or two year track record now of showing playing baseball at a really high level. And they've done that for two years now. So all-star break and all that, all the points that you made that will be media and fan talking points. I, I don't think the Orioles view it that way. I, I think the Orioles view it as this is the, the next week on the schedule. And we, the, the light is at the end of the tunnel in terms of getting a break and getting a respite, uh, a well-deserved respite for any of these teams. I mean, they've been at it for 90 plus games at this point in time, but they really do have an opportunity here to separate a little bit more. Uh, against the Yankees and uh, and do it directly this weekend where, you know, you can send the Yankees home, uh, send them home, uh, you know, to the golf course and the beach for four days. Uh, not feeling so great. And, and I love the- kicking them when they're down, especially yeah. when their fans have to like show up and because, you know, it's been a lifetime of this with the Yankees. So yeah. like uh, oh, yeah. of all the teams you want in second place, the Yankees are fun in second place. I did see an old uh, a picture this weekend. Somehow Jim Rice, Fred Lynn, and Dewey Evans all got together, and there was a picture of them together. It must have been a Boston reunion or some kind or something like that. And I thought to myself, you know, I always hated those guys in the 70s, but I respected them. I felt that way sort of about Bernie Williams and, you know, that version of the Yankees. This version of the Yankees, I, I don't I don't really like Soto. You know what I mean? And it has yeah. nothing to do with the incident last month or any of that stuff. Judge, crybaby in it and all that. I'm not one to pile on like that with the fans and even with football and all the words and all the nonsense with Terrell Suggs all that years with Pittsburgh and all of that. Um, I, I, this is a version of the, I don't like this Yankee team. I don't like, I don't like these guys. They're, they don't, they don't feel like the Yankees that you can at least look and doff your cap and respect a little bit. 
Yeah, I they they feel like a second play. They 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 had the attitude of losers. They they didn't come at you with that John Wayne that Tino Martinez and Roger Clemens would come after you with 20 years ago. This feels like a softer version of the Yankees to me. Now wake me up in October when you have to go beat them in a series, and I'll, I'll hear all of that. But they they haven't won anything either. Yeah, they, they, there there's there's no rings over there. There's there's nothing special about any of those guys other than their stats. Yeah, and that was kind of the point I was trying to make about that. I mean, yeah, payroll and and look, they're still a really good team too. Last three weeks aside, but they've had a three week period now where they haven't been as good. Uh, but. Yeah, I told the ter- story last week when my Orioles played Barry Stitz's Yankees and my manager said they put their pants on the same way we do. And yeah. there was a feeling for a long time that they didn't, you know, for going back to the 70s with Greg Nettles and, and Reggie Jackson. And I mean, you know, I saw Raleigh Fingers. All I could think about was Sparky Lyle and Goose Gossage back in those days over the weekend that it, there was a them and us. I don't know. They'd love to have Rutschman and Henderson. That they would, especially at the payroll we have it at. Uh, so you know, getting the, it's been a long time since we've gone into a gunfight with guns instead of water water pistols with the Yankees. Yeah. Well, I mean, even I mean, I think back to 2012. I mean, obviously they played the Yankees in the division series, and you know, we were there. It was a great series. Yeah, uh, that I mean, was, was the most. That was the closest the Orioles have come in my adulthood to being. Formidable. And I, I take 96, 97, 2012. They had a real chance. They, they one game, one pitch. They would have played the Tigers or whatever, or the, whatever Ray Ray Tigers Rangers. It was the Tigers. Tigers. The yeah, LCS, I mean, they, yeah. they would have had a real chance of going to the world series. Right. Yeah. I mean, the 12 and 14 were their, their best shots as far as the buck era. But even then in 2012, the Yankees were only a few years removed from winning the world series at that point in time. You know, they Jeter was still on that team. CC Sabathia was still on that team. Go down the list. Of, Rivera was still on that team. Whereas now, uh, I mean, you hear so much about the Yankee mystique and you still hear the national media talk about, there is no Yankee mystique right now, as it pertains to the players that they have right now. I mean, even Aaron judge who is extraordinary, right? I mean, Aaron judge, I, I, I can't say anything bad about him in terms of the player on the field or or, or really anything about him. And I, I guess when he complained about when he c- cried about Camden Yards and the wall being moved back a couple of years ago, I, I kind of laugh because it's like, dude, you're the one guy who could still clear that with ease. <laughs> you know, you don't have anything to worry about. Uh, but 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 he's a, a phenomenal player. But the one thing you hear about Aaron Judge, it's like, hey, you got to win, uh, especially in New York. Uh, and it, look, He's the least of their problems over, over the last few years. Obviously, he's been one of the best players on the uh, entire planet. But... He can't pitch. He's not Otani. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. So, As, I mean, as it... Dave Muir would say, he has a nude ring finger, is yeah, what he would say. Sure, you know? sure. And all those guys in New York do right now. I mean, Anthony Rizzo got his ring with the Cubs, right? And, and he's hurt right now anyway. So, so yeah, that, that whole Yankee mystique thing and that, that media and fans will talk about, and that's why – a couple of weeks back, all the whining and belly aching about the Orioles hitting Yankees batters. It's just like, are, are we, is this based in reality? Uh, because we talked about it. Those were two strike pitches in some cases and go look at how many batters the Yankees had hit compared to the Orioles and all. I mean, it was just, I go back to Armando Benitez and Tino Martinez 25 years ago. And that's ancient sure. history. Oh, know? that was our, that was on Armando at that point, but even BJ Suroff's like, yeah. you go fight yeah. him. I ain't fighting with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but no, but, but just like this current team, again, even if the perception is what it is because the, the Yankees have more veterans, a higher payroll, all that. I think the guys on the field, I think the Yankees players, uh, I think the coaches, they all know how how darn good the Orioles are at this point. There's, It's not a secret anymore. The Orioles aren't sneaking up on anyone at this point in time. And that's why the way that they've continued to go on and continue to win and continue to be one of the very best teams in baseball makes it that much more impressive. There is no sneaking up on anyone at this point in time. And, and yeah, the Orioles have some areas where they can augment. We'll talk about that. You know, we've talked about that a lot. We'll continue to talk about that. And after the trade deadline, what will we talk about then? The question will be, did they do enough? So that that's all there. But mean in the meanwhile, they're, you know, they're really, really, really good. And I just, I don't think I need to say this to too many people and I'm not trying to be preachy here, but don't take for granted the fact that this team so consistently just wins two out of three. Uh, because the Yankees over the last three three weeks are showing you that even for good teams, that is not something to take for granted. Uh, and the Orioles, uh, again, two weeks ago, the sky was falling. They lose five in a row, and 
well, they've just gotten right back on the horse and they've won eight of 11 since then. And now they go into this final week, having a great opportunity to win, to finish the first half, you know, we're past the halfway more mark, but you know what I mean? Going into the break, finishing that on a high note and maintaining a lead in the AL East. He is Luke Jones. He is Baltimore Luke. He's out on the interwebs. He will be at uh, Oriole Park at Camden Yards on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where they allow him access. I'll be writing about the fact that they do not allow me access a later on in the summer. Got to get to Labor Day in order to work. It's just the 4th of July around here. Um, we are uh, going to be down at Fadley's on Friday watching the aforementioned Orioles and the Yankees. We'll have scratch-offs in the Maryland Lottery, Gold Rush 7's doublers, our friends at Liberty Pure Solutions making our water crystal clear, as well as Jiffy Lube Multicare uh, getting us out on the road. Big week around here just in general. It's summertime. Uh, I'm actually headed to the beach next month for Mako into early August. We're going to be doing 26 oysters in 26 days to uh, celebrate our 26th anniversary, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Our 25 stories of glory will go away at Baltimore Positive, but uh, time will not dim the glory of your deeds out there uh, as well. Um, baseball on the brain. No football to talk about for a couple weeks around here, but I have a feeling that'll change by the end of the month. I am Nestor. He is Luke. We are WNST. AM 1570 Taos in Baltimore. Plenty of all-star talk this week. Plenty of trading deadline talk this week. We got you covered for Orioles baseball. We're BaltimorePositive.com.